Hello everybody, welcome to this week's show. Uh, we had a week off, uh, kind of swapped places with the sheriff and did a, did a show reversal here. <clears throat> Anyhow, hi, say hello to me. Hello. We'll talk a little bit about some stuff we got going on at the bar. We'll talk a little bit about stuff going on in the community and we're going to talk a little bit about some stuff that Matthew Huntley has going on too. So uh, we got a little a few things to cover today. Um, one thing is we're uh, going to miss Miss Maddie. Uh, she's uh, moved to different things, I think, but uh, we'll appreciate everything that she had done. Uh, Miss Charlotte's going to take good care of us, so we're really looking forward to working with Charlotte and, and stuff. So, uh, first off, we'll talk about what Matthew Hutley's got going on. I'm going to hold this up so people, so people on the podcast can see and i'll turn it back around here in a minute but here uh looks like uh september 14th uh it's on uh 838 literal road in loretto tennessee it's a 30 dollar admission it's called honky tonk heathens uh, it's a music festival and uh, really i'm gonna try to make it over there there's a lot of great names on here and uh you know shelby lee being one of them i'm a big shelby lee low fan i know matthew is too he wrote songs with him uh, broken beautiful miss tennessee and stuff and we just had a conversation with matthew here a few minutes ago and really looking forward to hanging out with him and listening to some good music and uh, uh man if y'all never heard miss tennessee or broken beautiful you need to look that up he's the song one of the, one of the songwriters on it and it was great but uh it's called Honky Tonk Heathens Music Festival. It's September 14th. It's at 838 Littrell Road in Loretta, Tennessee. Like I say, it's a $30 admission at the gate, and it's a BYOB thing. Uh, they got, uh, here's some of the people, and I apologize if I say your name wrong, because uh, I may have put my glass on, but we've got Luke Bushner, uh, Chevy Lee Lowe, Austin Bohan, uh, Mother Mars, Jeff Quinlan Band, Slammin' Otis, which we all know who Slammin' Otis is, uh, Braze Quillen, St. Mary Road, Levi Kelly, and Tim Nave. So, and the uh, gates open at 12 o'clock. Music starts at 1 o'clock. So, man, you're looking for a good day of music and stuff? That sounds like a thing. September 14th. Like I say, gates open at 12, music starts at 1. $30 admission, and it's a BYOB. And if you get any questions, you can, I'm sure you can get a hold of Matthew Hutley. And, or, but I'm going to hold it up one more time so everybody can pause it if you're on the podcast and see. Move it back some so you can see. On the radio, of course, you won't be able to see it. So, but anyhow. Yeah, now we'll move on. Uh, we started plate lunches on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's going really good. We were going to do it five days a week, but it's just a lot of work involved and a lot of food prepping and everything. So we've been doing it on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, we've been selling out around 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock every day. So they're going really well. I, I told Katie yesterday, I said, we're going to have to up the batches of food we cook in order to make sure that more people could eat it because it would be nice to have it all day long from lunch to dinner but then, well, uh, i hope there's some left when we get there <laughs> yeah what are we having today i forgot what we we're having. fried chicken uh mashed potatoes and gravy uh cream corn and okra and a roll yeah so, I think right. that's, so that's what's on the menu today yeah. at tuck's bar that's it sounds good. really good to, yeah, to me <laughs> well, we got it to go we got them to go and uh you can eat in or you can get it to go so just whichever one thing is, it starts at 12 o'clock, and usually in about three or four hours, we're sold out. Yeah, so, yeah. like I say, we're probably going to have to start doing more more for that. we got a concert coming up, uh, and this, man, these guys, we went to uh, the Troubadour and watched them play at the Troubadour in Nashville, and, you know, it's, uh, what a great show, man. And uh, the Malpass Brothers, a lot of people had never heard of them. Uh, they were from Merle Haggard for about eight years, I think, and they got their they're members of the Grand Ole Opry and uh, they got their own TV show yeah. uh, I think it's on RDF I believe it is yes but uh, yes yeah, the Malpass brothers if you ain't if you hadn't seen them or heard about them look them up online look them up on YouTube or and, and you'll really like their music they're old school music they sing a lot of Marty Robbins stuff and and you know just a lot of the older uh, standard country stuff that I really like and you know stuff I grew up listening to 
and the guys do a great job. We got they do a one religious song that you can look up on. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they do more, but the one that is just just suppose it's an old Lugan Brothers song, and I, I looked it up the other day and watched the video on it, and it was really good. I, and uh, you know, it kind of it, it meant so much to my wife that when she listened to it that uh, she got off her booty and went to church this week. So I mean, I guess I need two too. too so. anyway, well, but, I just uh, yeah. But uh, you know, but the the, the the show when we went up to the show. Debbie had to get her Kleenex out. Not only are they great singers and great entertainers, but they ought to be comedians. Yeah, also. I was laughing so hard. I mean, well, yeah. You weren't the only one. Everybody in yes, the place was yeah. laughing. But, but uh, they they put on a great show. They're entertainers, and that's yeah. what I like. And, uh, and they're really nice guys. Oh yeah, and then uh, Debbie got to talk to them a little bit afterwards. They also had, that when we went up there, seen them. Uh, we got, also had the pleasure of meeting Alex Miller. And, uh, yeah, and, and uh, he was here. A couple of weeks ago? Yeah, he was here. here, actually here in the back singing at the uh, cafe back here. So, uh, and then we met Ben Isaacs. Uh, that was a pleasure meeting. I met Jimmy Fortune a while back. Of course, I know Bradley Walker and stuff that sang with him. So, but, uh, you know, uh, it was, a, it's so nice getting to meet these guys and, you know, you watch them and listen to them sing and you watch them on TV all the time and getting to start to meet everybody. And Alex is, that's a big old young in there, so oh, yeah. you got the personality as big as he is too. So you know, I don't think he's ever met a stranger. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, the Malpass Brothers, it was such a great show, and I'm looking forward to having them here, and uh, and it's going to be great, great, great. We got plenty of tickets still left for that, and I gave uh, LB some a while ago. We're going to give some away on WLX, and uh, and. Uh, we got 10 we're going to give away. Yeah. So just be listening and him or Eddie, or, uh, LB or Eddie will be giving them away. You'll really enjoy it. Yep. 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 And so, yeah, it's a great show. So, uh, uh, Craig Fisher, we got him coming in October the 13th. He got hurt on a motorcycle wreck and we, we contacted the booking agent and stuff. And I think he's taking, what, August and September off to get well. So, We'll be one yeah. of the first shows back out when he gets out, I think, well, October Well, I probably really to see how I was doing, because I figured that's how I could find out. And, well, yeah. Well, yeah, and just see if we need to put the tickets on hold. And, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Anybody that didn't see Creed last time, Mr. Great Show, super great guy. He went out front and before the show and hung out with everybody up front and listened to Hawk sing some and and uh, did a really, really, really good job. and. Uh, and looking forward to having him back. He's got one of them bigger than life personalities. So, and I'm, I'm, I know he got hurt in a motorcycle wreck, but hopefully he's making, he's healing up really good. And like I say, Debbie called to check on him, but also check, make sure we didn't need to put the tickets on hold and stuff. So, so everything's still on for the October 13th uh, Creed Fisher show. So, yeah, uh, look forward to maybe everybody trying to make that. Like I say, the Malpass Brothers, if you don't know who that is, look them up. And I promise you, if you like old school country, you will love these guys. And they, they got their own songs too. Uh, they got some original songs. I like uh, Too Much Boogie Woogie and I like uh, Sleep When the Party's Over. And that's the one where they shoot, film the country music video oh, and yeah, throw out good. a Tootsie's <laughs> and the retirement party and the skating rink and the funeral. And, so anyhow, so it was a pretty good video. So if you get a chance, look them up. Of course, November 10th, which is my birthday, which is also the Marine Corps birthday, mm -hmm. uh, Front Mountain Country is going to be back. Uh, that's uh, Tim Rushlow, formerly of Little Texas, Richie McDonald, formerly of Lone Star, and uh, Larry Stewart of Restless Heart. And they're really good. They're really good. They have <laughs> 30 number one hits combined uh, being lead men for those bands. So that's where the front men, because they were the front men, the bands and stuff at the time. So like I say, they're formerly of Lone Star, formerly of Little Texas, and of course Larry Stewart's uh, with Restless Heart. And uh, they're such, such a great show, such a great show. Good guys, too, and uh, they're very good entertainers. So We've been very fortunate about the people we've had playing at our bar and stuff and, and the quality of, uh, I mean, some people say, when are you going to get a new racks? Well, I like, I like we're kind of catering toward the older stuff, you know. I mean, we, we're trying to get some more. We had our first two female artists uh, here. Uh, we had... Uh, Rhonda Vincent, it's yeah. put on a great show, and uh, 
Man, I can't wait to get her back. Maybe we could do the all bluegrass next time. I don't know. So uh, this time she brought the country music version of it, which was still most of the same band members, but I uh, had some different ones in there. And then we got uh, uh, Dana Carter, I mean, you know, sang Strawberry Wine. She did a great job, put on a great show. Um, and uh, of course, November 17th, back by a popular demand, Gene Watson. And he sold out. Two or three times already. So. This will be his third time, and yeah. people keep on saying, "When you gonna bring him back?" So. Well, well, he's back, <laughs> and, but I wouldn't wait a whole long time before I bought the tickets. If you hear this, and we putting it out there, you hear this, you might want her to buy a ticket because he's done sold out twice, and he's gonna sell out again, and you you won't be able to get the tickets. I, I can just promise you that. Yeah. Same thing on Creed Fisher. <clears throat> Creed Fisher sold sold out. Probably about as fast as any show we've had, and uh, tickets are going pretty quick on Creed Fisher right yeah. now. So, if you want any tickets on Creed Fisher, you might want to jump on it, and you're seated by how the tickets are purchased. So, uh, you know, uh, we got some people that come to every single concert, no matter what, and <clears throat> they guarantee me that. So they're usually on the front row, but from the second row back, you know, and then we got some tables that you can purchase too, but. Most of the tables are sold out for every single concert also. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. And uh, this weekend, we'll talk about this weekend. Uh, Friday night, we got Contagion. Uh, and this will be a no smoking night in the back. A lot of the bands are starting to request no smoking. So, you know, I hope that don't offend anybody, but uh, smokers are, are like 30% minority right now. And, uh, that, and they've requested nobody smoking. So, and that's why we don't have no smoking on a lot of our concert nights too because most of those require no smoking also so but uh friday night contagion will be playing there run cats and uh and there'll be no smoking that night on friday night uh saturday night we got horizon will be they this will be what their second time there second or third time <clears throat> second or third time, time. Yeah. yeah they, they enjoyed them uh i the first time they played there i didn't I, we I weren't there I, I was off in Florida racing, wasn't I? Yeah, we got, we called back. <clears throat> we called back, come back in and heard the last song. <laughs> but we were in Florida racing, so during Speed Week. And yeah, we won't talk about that. That wasn't no fun. But anyhow, uh, the, the horizon, it was good, but the racing part wasn't no fun. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, then September 6th, we got the Back Road Centers will be back, and uh, they do a great job. I think um, that's Will and them, the that's band. Will's Will, team. Will yeah. plays in. Will played uh, steel guitar for Shelby Lee last time he was up there. Did a really good job. He never practiced with him or anything. I, I, I really admire people that can just pick up an instrument and play and not very much practice. I think Will plays. Uh, Will plays the banjo, fiddle, steel, bass, lead, rhythm guitar. Yeah. I'm sure I'll miss something. Probably he did. Play, plays yeah. everything. I, I think he told me the only thing he really don't play is the drums. So. And, and well, he probably put his mind to it. He probably yeah, did that probably too. Could, <laughs> probably could. I, I wouldn't be worried about it. If I could play all them other instruments, I wouldn't be worried yeah. about it. I'd love to be able to play just one instrument. And, <laughs> well, <clears throat> you know, I did. But then I didn't want to stay with it, so I had other things I'd rather do. Yeah, well, I, <clears throat> I can't even play one instrument. I've been trying to play guitar for years, and I just can't. My fingers don't cooperate, but my fingers are kind of crooked. <laughs> as it, I know y'all can't see it on radio, but on Facebook podcast, they yeah, it's kind of like crooked fingers, racing fingers. Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know what we can blame it on, but. <laughs> We're going to talk about some other stuff we got going on too, and we'll get back to the bands here in just a few, a few minutes. We got some poker runs coming up, uh, some benefit rides, and some poker runs and stuff. Uh, this uh, Saturday, August 31st, we got the Peck Family Benefit Ride, and uh, they're going to make some stops. And this is for a family that the father's had some abdominal issues and some surgeries and stuff, and uh, and they have a little bit of a, they need a little bit of help right now. So uh, you know, in the past we haven't really said anything about. We're gonna try to put out some of the stuff that's in activities at the bar that's involving people and stuff. And but the Peck Family Benefit Ride is gonna be this weekend. It's a ten dollar entry fee. Uh, it's a, gonna be a poker run. And uh, you ride uh, 
Yeah, uh, say rider entry fees twenty dollars per bike and fifteen dollars with patch and uh, ten dollar for each each stop where you draw a card. It's gonna start out at the Sin City Clubhouse. It'll be at Parker's stop one, Tuck's stop two, Linda Gale's stop three, and then it's gonna end up back at the Sin City Clubhouse. And uh, they're gonna be some chicken wings and stuff there, and they're gonna have a silent auction and everything. But uh, I think. Uh, that's this weekend, and it's going to be from 1 to 5, August 31st. Yeah, I think it's this Saturday. Yeah, this Saturday, yeah. And then we got another poker run for the Polly family. Uh, it's going to be September 7th, which will be what, the following week. week. following yeah. week. It's going to start at the American Legion Post 60 uh, on Legion Drive in Pulaski. Uh, registration starts at 10, kickstands up at 11. Uh, it's going to start off at the Amer American Legion in Pulaski. Then it's going to be at the Hideaway in Elkton, then Tucks in Minor Hill, then JJ's in Pulaski, and then it's going to go back to American Legion in Pulaski. It's $15 per bike, $10 per rider, and it says Jeeps welcome. And it says food will be available for purchase at the end of the ride. And uh, you can call 931-478-0350 if you got any questions, speak with Marvin. And that's uh, 931 four. Seven eight zero three five zero, and that's the uh, Polly family poker run September seventh. <clears throat> and right now, start registrations at ten, kickstands up at eleven. Each week, uh, every time we ha have a poker runs or benefit rides or anything, uh, we're going to try to put it out there and uh, let everybody know what's going on, <clears throat> and, and try to help the community out and people that need help. We'll try to do our part. All right, I've had 9,565,000 9 questions about when is our next Jeep ride. Well, we got it planned. We got it planned. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> last time we only put it out there about four days. This time we're going to put it out there. It's going to be September 22nd. It'll be the third annual fall Jeep ride. The last one we did, we rode 61 miles the last fall ride we rode 61 miles never rode the same road and we had 114 jeeps or 117 i think it ended up with 117 117 we picked up yeah. some people here and there we had 117 jeeps <laughs> yeah <clears throat> and <laughs> everybody says uh, is there a trail map well my trail map's right here and i lead so I, I got a story to tell you about this you're gonna get kicked out of this we had the first stop, we had the, the last, this was on the last ride, which was only 40 something Jeeps or something like that. This was like the spring ride, not the fall ride. Yeah. <clears throat> or early summer ride, any rate. So we get, we stopped the first stop, and we got scattered out and everything. And somebody said, y'all need to keep a better eye on everybody. I said, all right. So I turned around and I drove backwards down the Ellis Road. I drove five miles backwards watching everybody. Oh, we did. Don't lie. Yeah, yeah five, I drove five <laughs> miles backwards. And, and, and right, so I did keep an eye on everybody yeah, for did. five miles anyway. So we didn't lose anybody during that time period. But uh, yeah, but uh, that was funny. I'm going to try to get out and, and I'm going to try to do a route. Uh, and that way, if anybody gets separated, and I'll a show route. you uh, a route, 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 whatever. Where in the south is a route? A route, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to try to do a map. Don't yeah. be correcting my redneck. You didn't even speak good redneck. I know. I my car even told me that. Hey, let me just say this. We bought this car, this Lexus uh, 570. It was supposed to understand any kind of language and all that stuff. So hey, Divi, they, Yeah, they was telling me it, it understood yeah. Australian. Yeah, so so Divi's going to tell it, get, do the voice commands on this car. It did not understand one single word mm -hmm. she said. So she right. don't speak fluent redneck, yeah. I'll just be honest I didn't say call, Chuck, call mom. You know, yeah, the kids, southern, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, uh, no, it didn't. It, it was never everybody else but them people. Oh, well, I could talk to it, and I speak terrible, and I could talk to it, and it understood what I said. So. Yeah, I took it back up that this thing's broken on this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't I'm the only thing. Enough for that, that thing it should. That was the only thing. What I mean, that wasn't the only thing that was broke on that thing. We're not gonna get into that. I don't uh, think JD Byers needs to call me and get my opinion on that. One. <laughs> that or my RV, either one. Yeah. We come. We. I, I gotta tell you. Uh, this is how our day started off. 
and and I, I'm hoping I'm not the only one in creation, but uh, so we get go by bar and make a list of everything we're going to talk about and do everything. So we get in the car, we head up here. This has happened to us twice now. And we've been out on the road both times, and both nowhere time. near the bar. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if my goats are sticking their horns up underneath that, but the stupid fan flew apart, cut the radiator off, and, the, and flung the serpentine belt off. Luckily, it knocked the serpentine belt off, so I didn't have any fire steering, so I knew there was something wrong. Uh, anyway, so we were on the way to, to do the show. Well, so we had to call April. April come picked us up, which made the bar open 30 minutes late, but she came picked us up. I got the truck and trailer, loaded up the car, Come up here. So now we're, we're already running about an hour and a half behind, you know, getting started on everything we need to get done. And and this is the, what the irritating part. If you ever noticed when you're in a hurry, and it don't matter, no difference if it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's so many Sunday drivers. I'm out there, I'm in a hurry. I get behind one guy in a white Ford truck running 15 mile an hour. I had to follow him five miles. Finally get around him, nobody behind me. Car pulls out in front of me again. Nobody behind me, he could have waited 15 seconds. Pulls out in front of me, runs 25 and 30. I'm like, really? He was cussing y'all. Uh, let me just tell you, <laughs> I could write a dictionary on cuss. Well, anyway, so, I, but, so anyhow, so. You know, Chuck always says these people, you know, no, that's only when people are driving really fast. No, so, no, so he, anyway, mate, we're going to get back to my story. Yeah, so then we story. get rid of that guy. So then I blow by another one. And, and it's double. I don't know why we got so many double yellow lines. I don't break the law. I try not to cross a double yellow line. I try to, I'm like, man. So I finally get around this guy. Well, I finally get around him and he turns in the store. I only, and I'm like, I only passed him. I followed him for four miles. And I passed him, he drives 200 foot and pulls into the store. <laughs> so then we get down there, they're doing construction <laughs> on the bridge, so I had to sit there and wait. So then we get past that, then there's another bonehead pulled out in front of me, so I mean, that, anyway, it's hard for me not to even talk about. I'm not going to turn on my blinker about, because they might mm, turn that way. If it's I just turn bad when you think people are looking in their mirror to see which way you're going to turn, just so they can turn in front of you and irritate you. <laughs> You ever notice that? Uh, I mean, so I was in a hurry all the way here. So then we get on the 64 and we got formation driving right in the left lanes. So, and you know, it's just, it's always something. Like, eh. You know, you remember the old trains that used to have the big cattle things on the front? I sure am glad I ain't got a car because I'd be moving people out of the way. I had, my old road rage is bad. I told David on the way, I said, I know what God didn't give me. He said, what? I said, patience. I have zero patience. So, you know. But I tell you. That's my little rant. I told you you need to breathe. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. And take a chill. Let me just say this much. I think she got my share of patience because she never gets wound up about anything. I stay wound up and she never gets wound up about anything. And, you know, well, I'm just one of them impatient kind sometimes. of Sometimes. That's like whenever I get ready to go buy something. I want right then. I don't want to wait. And if I'd wanted, I wouldn't have bought it. So, I mean, I guess I need to learn to wait because I buy a lot of stuff I don't need. We sure do. <laughs> well, you ain't helping none because most, most, <laughs> most wives say, oh, we don't really need that. Debbie say, oh, go ahead. And then we get it. Like, Why did I buy that? <laughs> because I'm an idiot. Anyway, huh? uh, yeah, we just. Bought some other day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bought a bus the other day, a 30 passenger bus, but hey, we're gonna have fun with it. Yeah, it's gonna I just have, gotta get the AC. Yeah, we'll get a wrap on it. It's gonna have Tuck's bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah boy, we're gonna have a good time. <laughs> yeah. So, back to what we was talking about. We can go pick you up. <laughs> uh, yeah, the third annual Jeep ride is gonna be September be fun. 22nd. It's gonna be fun. And and this will be the third year we've had it. We gonna get some t-shirts for this one. I have no idea. Right, we might all think start thinking about yeah. that. But last time, 
<laughs> Last time we bought t-shirts and we was expecting about 40 people and then, and then 117 showed up. So we didn't even get the t-shirts out because we, now we, we did for a few, but yeah. I mean, we didn't have enough to go around. We're afraid we'd make people mad. So anyway, uh, it's like the ducks we had. Uh, oh, I'm prepared. Uh, but anyhow. Yeah, I'm prepared for the ducks. <laughs> so <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> So we going to, so September twenty second. We'll be posting on Facebook. Everybody make your plans. We'll start gathering up around eleven thirty or twelve, and I'll I'll have you know if you need ice for your coolers or anything, I'll have ice and everything else, and and uh, we'll probably head out about one o'clock, one fifteen, one thirty, we, you know something like that. It depends on how many we have. Last year we had one hundred seventeen. We started to ride with one hundred and ten. By the time we got done, we had seven more. I'll yeah. try to do a map so that we, everybody know which direction we're going in case we get separated. Or and maybe might just say go a couple of miles, you know, go two miles, take a ride, you know, go. Yeah. yeah well, the that. thing is, if everybody will listen to instructions, uh, you wait on the person behind you when you make a turn. You don't got to wait on the person behind you until you make a turn. If we make a turn, then you wait on the person behind you, and then that person waits on the person by them. Quick, quick as everybody knows you just take off when you, the person behind you pulls up just take off because <clears throat> when you get that many jeeps you know you're, you're looking at three quarters to a mile long and so yeah i can't see the back yeah and we did have places where we <clears throat> could stop yeah, yeah. we got <clears throat> we got some places and that's another thing too i just always want to make sure we got plenty of trash bags because when we do stop we don't need to litter yeah and, and uh, we don't we and, always have yeah, we always yeah. try to make sure that everything's in we've even rode around a little bit the day afterwards to make sure nothing got thrown out so we we have some spots to where we can pull off you know and and hang out all righty september 6th we got the back road centers that's where i left off a while ago We'll get back to talking about some more stuff here in a minute. And uh, then September 7th, we got Smith and Guy. I'm looking forward to this guy. I met him. Uh, he was at uh, one of the Frontman concerts, I believe. And uh, he came, yes. came down. Yeah. It was one of the Frontman concerts. And he invited us to a thing in Nashville. I got to go up. Man, it was, uh, his band was playing. And we got to see Daryl Worley, Michael Walker was there, Christopher yeah. Bell. It was uh, a few of them. It was a DeWalt function, and uh, and we got and he invited us up, so we hear the band. Yeah, I had the truck driver mm -hmm. and uh, Infinity Infinity driver. Yeah, we had uh, yeah we had all of them. And yeah. that's during Christopher's hot time. I think he won the week before, and I think he won that race yeah. there too. But uh, so yeah, we got. To, I used to race with Christopher. And late models before he became a cup driver so yeah it was kind of a good scene but i appreciate mr smith inviting us up there and like i say september 7th he will be with us uh, which is about next week next saturday yeah next yeah. Saturday. yeah the night before the mile pass brothers yes yep and so and maybe he'll hang out and watch the mile pass brothers with us and stuff possibly yeah and uh, they'll be good we have a uh uh, uh, September 13th, we got Tequila Falls, and they'll be with us September 13th, and I always love uh, listening to their music. I like the flute when she plays the flute, and they're all up for Josie Awards, uh, nominated for the Josie Awards in different venue, different categories. things, different categories, what yeah. I'm trying to say. And also, we've been nominated for the Josie Award venue of the year. I'm proud of that. Be nice if we won it. Even if we don't, we get to go hobnob with them. Yeah. We, get to, we get to set up there at the Grand Ole Opry with them. So we'll, 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 dress up. Man, I guess it's an honor just to be nominated. Can we kind of just go in our jeans? Uh, I guess we could. I don't I don't really care. I'm sure they don't care either. Uh, they would be more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And then September 14th, uh, we got four miles gone to be back. It's been a while since they've been out doing their own thing. and. Uh, and then take yeah. a little break and everybody's got jobs and stuff so but uh, four miles gonna be back september 14th so i'm looking forward to that then we got a big weekend coming up uh after that september 20th we got geneva be playing friday now we had the same lineup uh what a month last ago? month yeah. yeah last month they had the same lineup uh geneva played i talked with geneva and Dwayne. i told him i said you're gonna have to stick around this time and see they had a prior commitment they had to leave and they didn't get to stick around and see Shelby but this time here Shelby Lee will be playing Saturday night now I think they're gonna be shooting some more video and stuff so 
Uh, but uh, so it'll be September 20th to be Geneva, September 21st to be Chevy Lee Low. And, uh, and uh, little, that's going to be a great weekend, like I say. All the dancers have been doing a lot of practicing to a bunch of his songs and stuff. So Monday, uh, Labor Day, we're going to be loading up a uh, limo. And if I can get the air conditioning fixed on the bus, we'll take the bus. But uh, we'll be loading up a limo and uh, taking a few folks up. And then Tandy, I think she said she's going to drive up because she don't trust my driving. <laughs> I think is what she said. <laughs> I thought she just didn't like to ride up with other people. Well, that was, nice that was, a, that was a polite way of saying I don't like Chuck driving. <laughs> Yeah, ain't that right, Tangy? Tangy like, that ain't what I said. <laughs> Tangy, for those that don't know, Tangy teaches all of our line dancing lessons at uh, and and Tangy Boots. Reed and Tanner. It's, it's funny, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I was, you know, they, the boys wasn't born around here, but they're twins and they're named Tanner and Reed. Well, you know, we got Tanner, Alabama and Reed, Alabama. That's, they're only like four miles apart now. Yeah, I thought Reed's that was pretty funny. But anyway. Different. Back, anyway. back, I can say how easy I get sidetracked. <laughs> back, but uh, Tangy and Reed and Tanner, they they teach our line dancing lessons, and uh, and uh, they do the beginners on Tuesday night at seven o'clock, and they usually go from seven to nine. Then afterwards, if you want to dance to some other stuff or try to learn something, then they they dance a little bit after nine. And, you know, I, they've danced up to eleven o'clock before, but yeah. Tangy's very very good. And the, and the boys are too. And and the good thing about having, you know, some nights Reed comes and Tanner don't. Some nights Tanner comes and Reed don't. Sometimes we have both of them, but they they're really good about, you know, if they see you having a little bit of issue, they'll pull you off the side and work with you and help you. And, and yeah. I think their teaching method is so good that like the other night they'd only been back there 30 minutes and we were up, we were having the pool tournament up front. And she come up and she said, come back here and let me show you what we've learned since they've been here. And it only been like 45 minutes and they'd already learned to dance to uh, 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 Chevy Lee's song, uh, uh, Single Wide Loving the do no, Double Wide Loving the Single Wide Trader Park or something like that. But anyhow. I don't know the name of it, but yeah, I know what you're but, but talking they, about. They'd already learned to dance to that. So I'm proud of that. And so we're loading up all the people that want to go to uh, Nashville Monday morning, uh, we're going to leave out about 8.30 from the bar, and we're going to go to try to be up at uh, Chief's Eric Church's place on Broadway about 10.30. Shelby plays from 10.30 to 2.30, Monday through Friday at Chief's. So if you're in Nashville, don't forget to go by Chief's and see, yeah. see Shelby Lee playing from 10.30 to 2.30 every day. And... Uh, and uh, uh, Jake, he plays with Shelby some too. He's he usually plays at uh, second fiddle second, up there too. Yeah, so second fiddle. You can catch him at second. Yeah, and then my old too. buddy Ronnie McDowell Jr. He's he's playing uh, he's playing uh, at uh, Layla's up there. He'll Layla's. be playing drums, and he plays for Cliff Waddell, which is going to be uh, the following week after Shelby Lee's there. Cliff Waddell, first time we've had these guys. And man, if you've been to to Layla's up on you oh, see, you've yeah. seen Cliff Waddell sing. They, there is country music. It's stuff like you see at Monk Music City Bar and Grill. And if you like old school country music, that's the night you want to come because Cliff Waddell and Shelby plays a lot of the old stuff too. So, and of course Shelby's got a lot of new songs. But Cliff Waddell will be there September 27th. So anyway, so we're just hitting everything all the way down yeah. Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we're looking at. Uh, I haven't talked to Ronnie Jr. yet, but uh, I'll probably see him Monday or Tuesday. But I know they're out traveling right now doing some shows. But I'm going to see if maybe we can get Ronnie McDowell to come back and, and do another show for us. And, you know, we'll, uh, we're not, we're not going to do a whole lot of shows in uh, December uh, and, and January this year because, if, you know, people trying to get prepared for Christmas and stuff and you know we don't want to mess their money up for us Christmas concerts, and then yeah. you know so if we do, do have any concerts uh, you know uh, we haven't really decided yet we'll just put it that way so I don't know that we may take December and January off for concert wise this year we got two con big concerts in uh, November yeah we got uh, Frontman of Country, 10th, and Gene Watson. But anyway, but 
like I say, Cliff Waddell, he'll be there to, uh, September 27th, and that's going to be a great night. But well, it's going to be a great, great weekend, too. We've got some great weekends. We've got Back Road Centers one and Smith and Gone one weekend. Tequila Falls, Four Miles Gone one weekend. we got Geneva and Chevy Lee Low the next weekend. we got Cliff Waddell and Tyler Jones the next weekend. How's that for a lineup? Yeah. I want to be out of town. Yeah, I hate it when that happens, but that's so good. I mean, and, and Tyler's got, Tyler Jones yeah. has got uh, getting a lot of radio play right now for his song. And we got keep he's spinning. Gonna, yeah, he's gonna come on. Yeah, he, one day our with next uh, show, he's probably gonna be here. Our next show, we'll have it. We'll be interviewing him some, and uh, anyhow, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good month, September. We got a lot of great mm -hmm. shows coming up. And, a lot of mm. stuff going on. Yep, a lot of stuff. Like I say, this weekend. Uh, our back, uh, you know, we've had a lot of people talking about they wanted to come eat and stuff, but the cigarette smoke bothered them. Well, now the back part of the bar, uh, it's complete air conditioning. It's the big part where we have all our concerts and stuff. Yeah, from Sunday to, to Friday at dinner, it's no smoking in the back anymore. So uh, it's only going to be smoking on Friday and Saturday night and then Sunday through Thursday or through Friday at dinner time yeah. it's no smoking. Well unless and a this, band requested and, right? and the band requested yeah. this week no smoking on Friday night. So it'll yeah. be, so this week the only night we'll have smoking in the bar this week will be Saturday night. And I'll be honest with you, we've had a lot of the bands requesting no smoking. I mean because it you know kind of bothers them when they're singing and stuff. Even if we don't allow smoking in the back, you're only 15 feet away, 15 steps away from being up front to where you can smoke in the AC or you can go step outside and smoke. So, I mean, it's not really that big a deal. I mean, it's going to put you out a little bit, but you got to remember, you're only in like the 30% range of people that smoke and 70% don't smoke. So, you know, and I, you know, we're losing quite a bit of customers because I've got some friends that won't come right now because of the cigarette smoke bothers them so bad. So. So we're trying to cater to both. I mean, the front's always been smoking. It'll always be smoking, but the back part, you know, we're catering a little bit more to the no smoking part right now. So, and uh, the dancers and Tangy and all of them have requested no smoking back there. And some of them smoke and they don't mind it. They just walk right back up front and smoke. And you gotta go up front to get to the bathroom anyway. So just go to the bathroom and smoke a cigarette. Yeah, you know how that goes. You can back, make you feel like you're back in high school. I'm go sorry. hide in the bathroom and smoke a cigarette in the bathroom. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, I hear you. I know what you're thinking about. You never done that, did you? Nope. <laughs> I didn't. I tried to be good at school. <laughs> <laughs> I only got paddled once. Is it got cloudy outside? Yet? No, I only got paddled right. once, and it's because it was the day we skipped we and we we got did. caught. Yeah. But I wasn't in that school that day. Yeah. So I got a paddle for nothing. Well, yeah. I wanted to skip the day we skipped. Well, you should have got a pedaling for you just skipping. <laughs> well, I did, but I didn't skip that day because mm. I wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty funny. You get, we're going to call them whoopings because in the South we call them whooping. Not whipping, but whooping. You get a whooping. So you, you got a whooping. I, I remember Debbie telling me about one whooping she got that she remembers in particular. I know all as kids, we all remember that one particular whooping mm -hmm. we got, you know. And uh, Debbie hit her brother in the stomach with a baton. Yeah, he yeah. wouldn't give it back to me. So yeah. I got it and I, yeah, my daddy got me good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Daddy didn't do whip us very much. Yeah, we whipped whip us very much. We lived in Hopkinsville, <laughs> Kentucky, and uh, my sister was in this box, and I chunked a rock, and it just so happened the only hole in the box, uh, rock went in, beamed her in the head. She, I think Jeannie still got the mark. She's got on, the scar. Still got still. the scar on her head. And, Sorry, sis. <laughs> and, uh, boy, this, and then, then the other time I got a whooping, my daddy kept telling me said. Said, said, y'all want me quiet back there so I can watch TV? I'm y'all gonna get whipping. And uh, well, Diane, and we just lost her here a while back. Diane, she told me, Diane King was her name. She, she said, your daddy won't whoop me. I said, my daddy will whoop you. And this is back in the 60s. And this has been a long time ago. And he hollered at her one more time. He said, y'all be quiet. I'm gonna whip you. So I climbed underneath the bed. I, I know it was coming. I got all the way against the wall. Dad said, what are you doing? I said, he's finger whip us all the time. You won't be quiet. And here she goes. He kept, 
she won't he won't whip me so she kept on and the next thing i know she's under the bed with me because i hear daddy walking down the hall and here we go i seen it. his hand looked like it looked like king kong went went under that bed he grabbed her by the ankle whooped her booty and and uh then then the hair come got me i got my booty whooped hey i can't believe your daddy whooped me i said it don't matter <laughs> Hey, we both got whippings. Mm -hmm. That's back when we behaved. That was our ADD medicine or whatever it was called back then. We got wore out, you know. But, anyway, but those are the whoopings I remember. You remember the whoopings you got? Yeah, cause yeah. I don't know how we got to talk about whoopings. Oh. Uh, we got sidetracked. <laughs> see, my mind wanted. It's not about, easy for me and you to get sidetracked. Yeah, yeah we're not we're not very intelligent, so we just. Speak about what the first thing comes to our head, you know how that goes. Oh, wait, and that, I know it's not till November, but we're going to try something the night before Thanksgiving this year. Oh, yeah. We've yeah. got Back Road Centers coming. Yep, Back Road Centers and will be playing. Probably have some other things we're going to do. Yep. we got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, the Back Road Centers, uh, night before Thanksgiving, I think we're going to try to cook some stew or something or soup or something. Then, uh, well, Halloween we got uh, we got uh, Tyler, Jones. Tyler Jones will be playing, and then I think and we're dressed doing, up. Katie's yeah. already made our mind up what we're gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> we got the Wizards of Oz thing going here. I'm supposed to be the Great Oz, but I feel more like Toto. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be an overgrown. I'd be a giant sized Toto, wouldn't I? Uh, you better because you might make you one of the flying monkeys or the Munchkins or whatever they they were. The Munchkins, the Munchkins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, she's already wanting to do a yellow brick road. And <laughs> in case y'all don't know, Katie Buck, she's she's big into she's big into decorating and everything, and she always wanting to uh, decorate. I mean, if she left out to her, we'd start decorating for Halloween. And oh August. yeah, she always wants to get bones out. Yeah, yeah. Bone, bones is our friendly ghost that sits at the pool table, What's sits at the bar. And, yeah, he carries on an intelligent conversation. He'll never say nothing. Really nice and quiet, but he usually occupies a seat at the bar for about a month. So yeah, you know, and it kind of, hey, he kind of looks like Dan Shaw, don't he? <laughs> hey, by the way, Dan, if you're watching, uh, uh, Butch Menifee said Western Kentucky's coming after you. So you know, I thought I was about to tell you. So I just told you on there. You know, <laughs> but anyway. That's a side joke we all know about, but yeah. <clears throat> but uh, like I say, uh, Monday we're all going up to Nashville. We're going to be leaving the bar about 8.30. Anybody, if you don't want to ride with us, if you just want to follow us, we're all going to go up there and they're going to dance and just going to hang out on Broadway. Monday's a holiday, so if you ain't got anything else you want to do, we're just going to we'll go to Shelby's. I mean, watch Shelby Lee from 10.30 to 2.30, and we may hop bop around a little bit at a few of the other clubs downtown. We usually do. Yeah, we do, yeah. And I don't know what exactly what time. We was talking about four o'clock, but everybody's having a good time, then they might want to stay longer. So we're, we're just, flexible. Yeah. We'll play it by ear. Yeah, that's usually what we do anyway. <laughs> we don't try to plan anything. <laughs> well, if I ever plan anything, it usually goes haywire, and I don't need to do that. So I just, yeah. I try not to plan anything. We're spontaneous people. Yeah, spontaneous. I don't know. Sometimes spontaneous is <laughs> good, sometimes it ain't good. Anyway, but like I say, our plate lunches, and now we got the, our plate lunches on uh, Tuesday and Thursday, they're never the same thing. Uh, we have to go food all during the week and everything. I mean, I know if you live in Lawrenceburg, you ain't going to go all the way to Minor Hill to get food but and to, to, to take out, but. You know, we have, we have a lot of good takeout business too. So, But if you're in our area and passing by, stop by. We got good catfish, steaks, uh, pork chops, chicken fingers. We got fried green tomatoes, jalapeno poppers. Uh, we just got all kind of stuff to eat. eat. And yeah. Frog legs, we got frog legs. And uh, we, got a, we got a Chuck special, which is, uh, that came about because I don't like bell peppers and stuff and all the crazy cheeses. So Katie said, well, what would you like to have on it? She said, I want you to try this meat. And I said, well, I like mustard and grilled onions and 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 American cheese. And so she went back there and fixed that. And it was good. And then somebody was there and tried it and they thought it was good. And I like, 
So we wind up putting it on the menu, and it's one of our top sellers. We have a we have a lot of call for it. Yeah, we do. Every week with our plate lunches too. Last week she made a strawberry homemade strawberry cake. That was really good. I mean, we have different stuff. One week we had pies and stuff, so you never know what we got for dessert. Yeah, we we always got fried pies. We just um, sometimes we don't know what we're getting. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, because they all came in a box together, so yeah. <laughs> we didn't know it was gonna get it that way. Yeah, but uh, what else we got going on at the bar? Oh, we got APA. Um, yeah, we got the, on Monday nights we do APA and we're forming up the fall leagues right now. And we've added, actually added a couple of teams, uh, Monday nights eight ball. Yeah. And I'm not much, uh, <clears throat> I don't like nine ball, but and, uh, we got nine ball on Thursday night. But we're forming up new leagues and new teams and stuff. And if you're interested in coming and playing, we got a bunch of our teams are full already, but what we can do is if we keep got people keep coming we can take a couple off each team or one off each team and we can start up another team and our goal is i mean it's really cool because uh, uh we just got back from vegas two weeks ago one of the teams that qualified for the world qualifier out in vegas and I, I, there's a lot of prize money yeah, there was over 400 pool tables out there too and there's you see some great pool players plus all the q vendors and the vendors and the shirts and everything there was vendors everywhere up there and it was a it was a really fun thing and uh, one day we all loaded up i had a rental car one day we loaded up and rode down to hoover dam we got to go to uh seen hoover dam and we uh we saw went by where they filmed pawn star pawn stars we went there and yeah. then we went to counts custom and got to go through the museum they got there and then we went down to welder up which is one that does the rat rods with diesel engines and stuff in it we went by there and got to see that, and then we went down to uh, uh, Fremont. Fremont Street, and then yeah. Divi, Divi and Hunter Brooks, and who else did we? Uh, Tanya. Tanya. Tanya uh, McGill, and well, uh, Kiefer wasn't able to do it. Yeah, and we, but anyway, they all rode the zip line, and it was a lot of fun, and we got to see, you know, we got to venture from. Casino to casino and see stuff, so it was pretty cool. And we bought a painting while we was out there. A guy did it at a graffiti. We'll have it at the bar here coming up pretty quick, but he did it with a spray can like graffiti and stuff. Man, it, I mean, this guy, he took pieces of yeah. cardboard and bent it and sprayed it up in it, and it looks like the it's the Bellagio with the fountains and stuff in front of the one we got, and it's go shoot star across the sky. So that guy did a really good job, very talented. Very talented, so you know, some of them guys do great work and everything. Then we saw a guy that was uh, on America's Got Talent, was in the mail. Have we even talked about this since we mm -mm. Me, we me, uh, so <laughs> There was a guy out there, he, he took four glasses and a plate, and a uh, plate of glass, and then four glasses and a plate of glass, and he had the thing stacked up. It was about 10 foot tall, which about, it was, so he was on probably on like, eight layers or nine layers, and he took yeah. a little shot bottle or something. And he drank out of it, set it down there, and the thing was about the size of a silver dollar, the neck was. And the guy stood on his head on top of all those plates and glasses on top of the thing. He climbed up, stood on his head, and, and stuck his arms and his feet out, standing on his head on top of that little bitty glass jar. So there's some very talented people. Let me just tell you, we'd had a broken glass mess if I'd done it. So. Oh, yeah. But first off, I wouldn't have tried oh, yeah. it. So I just said, I told Chuck, I said, I know I've seen that guy, so I just went and asked him. I said, you've been on America's Got Talent? He said, yeah. Yeah. So I meant to ask him how he did. Yeah. <laughs> he was really good, man. He was really good. Uh, anyway, but the, the pool players out there, and you know, uh, we yeah. represented well. And, and we're back to what I was talking about before we got talking about Vegas, you can come get on one of our teams, and if you qualify to play, if you win, make it through the season and you win that thing, then at the end of the year, if you're qualified, you get to go to cities and then you play in cities and then if you do good there, then you get to go to Vegas. And uh, the APA picks up a, a good bit of yeah. it. A good bit well, of it. <clears throat> we're going to be able to go to cities because yeah. our team won. Yeah, our, we're going to try. So we got to get, but yeah, well, we got to, we're going to have to play better than we've been playing here lately, but anyhow. So, <laughs> but yeah, our, the team that me and Divi started our own. Right now, we actually qualified to go play in the cities this time, so 
if we went there, then we'd get the chance to go to Vegas. Yeah. And last time we just went to support our team, uh, you know, was, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. It was uh, uh, Kiefer Roberts, Tanya McGill, Jimmy McLemore, Meredith Rogers, Brian Blakely, uh, Joy Van Winkle, uh, who was that? Hunter, Hunter Brooks. Hunter Brooks, mm -hmm. yeah. So, anyway, they did really, I'm very proud of them. They got, one day they got behind 36 to 4 and they come back and won. And that had to be the biggest comeback that anybody's came back out there because they did really good. Yeah. And I'm very proud of them. They represented us well. They finished up in the first third of all the teams out there. I think there was, I don't know. 600 exactly, something teams. 600 and they finished up. 128? 130 or something. I don't know, somewhere up in there. But yeah, they made it to the, what, fifth round? I don't remember. They would have made it in the fifth round. Yeah. So. But anyway. They only lost by one point. Oh, yeah. We came right down to it. Was, and of course, they played as a team. You know, and if any one of the team had got one more ball, they would have won. So it just don't fall on any one person. Yeah, so. true. And, but, you know, yeah. it was very good. It was, it was great. And I mean, I enjoyed watching it. And of course, when we got behind 36 to five, uh, four, I don't know if some of y'all seen on the internet, but I put a rally hat on. It was the only thing I could find was a, it was a bag. Uh, it was a plastic bag, but he forgot mm -hmm. it the next day and he had to get a different plastic bag. He got a different bag. one. It didn't work as well, but we almost got back. But anyway, I wore that whole thing. That's why I called us the peanut gallery. <laughs> yeah, well, it, but that was so much fun. It, it was. was so it was really, it, they they were really good, really good sportsmanship, mm -hmm. uh, poo etiquette, which some other teams didn't have good that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they just got along together really good. And, and Keeper, he, yeah, he, he, set up you know yeah you need a lot of strategy did. involved I, yeah. uh, I think tanya was a co-captain too so there was a lot of strategy involved and stuff and playing who you're playing against who and listening and paying attention and they did really good i was really proud of them so they represented north alabama and minor hill tennessee very well and represented tux bar very well and yep hopefully they'll get to go back and do it again uh, so uh, hopefully one of the teams will get to go back yeah because that was a lot of fun also uh also we got some uh, splash boards and stuff that we're feeding to come up and do that's be the individuals and and you you know even if your team don't get to go they have captain and co-captain tournaments and they have splash boards so apa's got a lot of good stuff going on and it gives you opportunity to play in tournaments and everything so. yeah matter of fact the the captain's team i don't th think it was called that but they uh the ones from out yeah, yeah, they wind up winning. They won. Yeah, yeah. from Alabama. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a bunch of the owners of some of the bigger places and stuff. Right yeah. There. So, anyway, so they did really good. Yeah. They did really good. And, uh, but uh, I'm going to run over the schedule right quick and then we're going to call it a day again. And it, the hour, I always wonder what we're going to talk about for an hour. And then all of a sudden the hour is up and I'm like, wow, that went faster than I thought. And, uh, Miss Maddie? Just know we're gonna miss you, girly, and uh, and it's great. And Butch, appreciate you getting us in with WDXE and WLX and, and WKSR, and and, and so all, all to Miss Charlotte and everybody. We great, greatly appreciate what they do for us. Don't y'all forget Matthew Hutley, Honky Tonk Heathens Music Festival. Uh, it's gonna start at Missions thirty dollars. Uh, at the gate, it's a BYOB, September 14th, 838 Literal Road in Loretta, Tennessee. Gates open at 12, music starts at 1, and that's Matthew Hutley. I mean, that's a honky tonk. Uh, Matthew, if you got any questions, you can call Matthew. It's honky tonk heathens. There you go. Boom. Da -da -da -da. I know the people on the radio can't see that, but anyhow. <laughs> All righty, let's go over this right quick. September 8th, we get the Mile Pass Brothers. October 13th, Craig Fisher. November 10th, uh, Frontman of Country. November 17th, Gene Watson. This Friday, we got Contagion. This Saturday, Horizon. Uh, September 6th, Back Road Center. September 7th, Smith & Gone. September 13th, Tequila Falls. September 14th, Four Miles Gone. September 20th, Geneva. September 21st, Chevy Lilo. Don't forget he'll be filming some more videos, so y'all please come out and support him. Uh, September 
27th. That'll be uh, our first time for Cliff Waddell here. Good old fashioned country music and great traveling musicians and everything. And Cliff is a super great guy, great singer. September 28th, Tyler Jones. Keep the world, world keeps spinning. Man, right? And don't forget, September 22nd, the third annual fall Jeep ride. For everybody out there, y'all have a great, great, great weekend and have a safe Labor Day and everybody take care of yourself and take care of your neighbors. Till next time. Bye, come see us.